My mom likes our new house, and she's moving in with us starting today. My husband said, If you don't want to live with us, then leave. My mother in law said, I didn't understand what they meant at all. I'm Jenny, 27 years old, a housewife, and currently pregnant. My husband Lucas is 30 years old, and he's an office worker. When I got pregnant, I knew that they would be crying at night with a baby, and we wanted to raise my child in a spacious place, not in a small apartment. So we decided to build a new house on my father in law's land. Now, When building a new house, there would be a meeting with the architect. I was soaring. I want a kitchen of this color. I want a bath like this. I think everyone dreams of the ease of use and the design they like, and it makes them excited. I was so happy to have a baby and a new house. However, I had a worry. Every time we had a meeting with the architect, my mother in law was always present. Why does your mother attend the meetings? I asked my husband. She did the renovation of my parents' house three years ago, so I should get some advice from my senior mother. At one meeting, my mother in law said, We need one more large room. There should be a large space for the Buddhist altar. She ordered us to have a large space for the Buddhist altar. What? The big Buddhist altar you have? It's an old fashioned Buddhist altar in my parents in law's house. She wants to have a space for it in our house. And you want an additional room? It would become difficult to take care of the house if we had so much more rooms than we need, I said. You need to have a lot of rooms when building a house. She made a single minded statement. Why does your mother decide everything about the house when she won't live together? I asked my husband. My mom is a senior home ordering professional because she has experience in remodeling. Besides, I've never made a mistake in my life by listening to my mom, he replied. But when are you going to take the Buddhist altar? We live separately, and that will happen after your father and mother have passed away. So if it's time, we could think about what to do with that. We can't have that big one at our home, I argued. Are you trying to speak badly of my mom? Who do you think you are? He was just like that, not listening to me. I didn't want to make space for Buddhist altar, so I decided to negotiate with my mother in law again at the next meeting. The room for the Buddhist altar is inevitably a dead space, I said. You think so because you're still young. When you reach 80, you will definitely feel more comfortable with more rooms. And then you will feel more at home with the Buddhist altar because I'm the same way. Oh, please get rid of those steps. We need a barrier free house and add handrails on the stairs. My mother in law did not listen to me. In the end, the house was built with the layout that my mother in law wanted barrier free, handrails on the stairs, and an extra room for a large Buddhist altar for the future. I tried to prevent it until the construction began. My mom is professional. She can't be wrong. Don't speak ill of her. My husband kept repeating so. I couldn't discuss it with him. I couldn't talk back strongly about it because the house is being built on my father in law's land. If we don't have to pay for the land, the amount of repayment would be less. However, if we put all my mother in law's wishes into the house, The construction cost would naturally increase. I was very annoyed that I had to pay an additional cost to add more space only because my mother in law's wish. The architect understood the situation and suggested that we could reduce the cost by eliminating some parts. He made some suggestions to reduce the cost. Money will come back to you if you spend it comfortably. That's what my mother in law said. Well, the new house was completed. I was very happy to see the new house, and the smell of the new wallpaper made my heart flutter. Newly built houses smell really good. A few days after we moved in, my mother in law and father in law came with a housewarming gift. Thanks to you, we were able to build such a splendid new house. 
I thanked my father-in-law. In fact, it is. I feel that we probably would not have been approved for a large loan if we had purchased not only the house but also the land. My father-in-law smiled. The smell of a new house is so nice. Now you are ready to welcome a baby as a grandfather. I couldn't be happier," he said, his eyes narrowing at the thought of his yet-to-be-seen grandchild. My husband showed them around the new house, proudly displaying the Buddhist altar room. All that remained it was to wait for the baby to arrive. But then something unexpected happened. While we were having breakfast on Sunday, a moving company came to our house. The package is arrived. I had no idea what was going on. Anyway, I opened the door. I asked him if he had a wrong address, but the address was right. I was puzzled because I didn't understand the situation. I heard the sound of a bicycle warning, tinkle, tinkle, tinkle. It was my mother-in-law. She parked her bicycle in front of the house, pointed at the belongings in the moving truck with a straight posture. And began to instruct, "Put this here and this one there." What is going on? The scene was so sudden that I was at a loss for words. Then my husband, who had heard the commotion, came out of the front door. Scratching his head, he said, "My mom liked the room for the Buddhist altar so much that my parents are going to move in with us starting today." What? Their belongings were suddenly brought in by the movers, and then I was told that we would have to live together. How is this possible? Then my mother-in-law said, "What are you just standing there like that, getting in the way of the moving in of our belongings?" She grabbed my shoulder and pushed me. "No, I'm not just standing here. I'm standing here in a daze. If I had been in good health, I would have set that back." But there was so much information to analyze that my head couldn't keep up. My mother-in-law seemed to have noticed my pale complexion. I had been thinking about moving in together since the meeting with the architect. At first, I was listening to you to give you some advice, but gradually your house became closer and closer to my ideal. And when it was done, your house was just perfect. So we decided to move in together. But what's wrong with you? Are you dissatisfied? If you don't like living together, then leave. This land belongs to my husband, so it's our house. The Buddhist altar room is for the baby's crib and cradle. I was thinking of putting baby stuff in that space. The empty room was supposed to be the baby's room, but now it's going to be the in-laws' room, and I'm being evicted. I couldn't accept the situation. So I came outside. The wind outside was still cold, even though it was early spring. It was just the right temperature to cool my head down. My cooled head started to spin. Then, I came to a question. Wait a minute. What about that parents in law's house that was fully remodeled three years ago? I went to visit my in law's house. When I visited, my father in law was standing at the front door. Edward, he looked back at me and said briefly, "Let's go to your home." When I returned to my new house with my father-in-law, the moving of their belongings was almost finished. The moving van was no longer there. What did you come back for? Do you mean you agreed to live with us, or are you prepared to be thrown out? My mother-in-law, who was having tea with my husband in the living room, was grinning at me. If you are going to leave, you will have to pack your own things. My father-in-law stood in front of my mother-in-law, who said such a thing without care. Hey, we are leaving. If you don't want, get out of this house and out of my house. Huh? My mother-in-law dropped her teacup, and the red tea soaked the table. Why? Lucas has agreed to let you stay here with us too, right? My mother-in-law asked my husband. Lucas nodded quickly. Because Mom said she wanted to do so, he said as if it was a matter of course. Hearing this, 
My father-in-law was furious. How long are you going to keep putting your blind face in your mother? You are already 30 years old. You should be mentally independent. I had never seen my father-in-law, who was always so mild-mannered, get so loud and angry. My husband's shoulders shook at the sound of his voice. Your mom has changed. My father-in-law pouted in a muffled voice. Where did you get the idea that if you spend money comfortably, you will get it back? He asked my mother-in-law. I was surprised to hear such a familiar phrase. And I heard that too. She said it during the meetings with the architect. I said so. I knew it. My father-in-law nodded and told me what had happened so far. She said she would spend money comfortably. Then it would be returned to her. So her belief in Buddhism escalated. She started to entrust a fish and a lottery of about $5,000 to a shrine because she believed she would get the money doubled in value and returned to her. Entrusting a fish and double the money? I didn't even have time to ask back. It's a true story, you know. My mother-in-law exclaimed in a tone of annoyance. Because that's what I said on the internet. Internet? I was so surprised that I shouted even louder than my mother-in-law. Is it based on information from the internet? where anything can be false or true. I spoke my words little by little. My mother-in-law's belief in Buddhism is based on information from the internet? If you entrust a fish and entrust lotteries in value of $5,000, they will be doubled and returned to you? I was surprised that the basis for this was internet research. But my mother-in-law was very serious. Yes. You should search for money-saving actions or money-saving spells, and you will find them. My mother-in-law pushed her phone against me. I couldn't hold back any longer. What do you mean search for a spell? <laughs> what are you laughing at? How could I not laugh? My mother-in-law turned red and squealed like a monkey, and I couldn't stop laughing. Beside her, my father-in-law said, yeah, if he wasn't my wife, I would have laughed it off too. Looking at my father-in-law, I felt sorry and stopped laughing. It would have been unforgivable if my hard-earned money had been used in such a way. My father-in-law continued his words. That's why I wanted to help you guys while I still had my savings, because one day I thought she was going to get her hands on my land. Then. He looked at his wife. I don't want all of you to be victims of my wife's wrong thinking. I thought enduring it and letting my wife do what she wants would be for the sake of my unborn grandchild. But my husband interrupted my father-in-law's explanation. What the hell? Are you going to talk bad about my mom too, dad? My husband stood in front of my mother-in-law as if he was defending her. I was annoyed by this situation. What are the attitude of my husband and the way he is talking to me and my father-in-law? I would never forgive them. I wanted to protect my father-in-law. In return for my husband standing in front of my mother-in-law, I stood in front of my father-in-law and I nipped at my husband. Your mother is thinking that the internet is always right and your thought that your mother is always right is the same. Your mother and you are really unfortunate adults who can't discern the truth of information. My father-in-law has had to endure my mother-in-law's extravagant spending all his life, and I was probably the first person to stand up for him. Thank you, Jenny. He said in a small voice, I thought I had given you the least by having you build a new house on my land. But at the same time, I was already running out of savings because of my wife. Then she suggested we go to Lucas, who had money because people and money gather where there is money or something like that. It's not about the truth and false of internet information. It's a problem with my mother-in-law's personality. She's completely like a hermit crab, going from shell to shell. But my husband and mother-in-law didn't give up. But of course, you go where the money is. 
And if Mom wants to move in with us, she can. That's why Lucas built us an extra room and agreed to take over the Buddhist altar. Saying Mom is always right and the internet is always right, and the two of them were yelling and screaming. These two cannot be saved anymore, and my father in law and I looked at each other. If I had been at the beginning of my relationship with this husband, I would have said, Yes, yes, you can say that for the rest of your life, bye bye, or whatever. I would have said goodbye to him. But now that I know how my father in law feels, I cannot simply leave. I felt a surge of righteous indignation that I had to make them go away for my father in law's sake. Because he's the future grandfather of my baby. First of all, Grace, you're wrong. I told my mother in law directly. You say it's written on the internet. Well, why don't you search for Lucky Charms crap or something? Seriously, no, I don't deny good luck. But if you want to make more money, it's much more practical for you to go to work than to entrust lottery tickets at the shrine, though. At the very least, if you'd apply the time you wasted goofing around in meetings about our new house to our part time job, you'd have a few tens of hundreds by now. And then you realize what kind of effort does it take to get those tens of hundreds? How hard your husband worked to earn the amount of money you bought the lottery tickets you gave to the shrine? I told my mother in law that much at once. And now I turn the blade of my words to my husband. And you, who believe your mother so much that you assume everything is right and don't even notice that you're about to be regulated, will not be capable of making the right decision for your child. In other words, it's a divorce. Huh? My husband's voice trailed off, as if he hadn't expected the conversation to proceed to the point of divorce. In contrast to him, my mother in law yelled, Fine! Get out of here! My mother in law spat at me. However, it was my father in law who blew away my mother in law's strong spirit at once. You are divorcing me too! My father in law firmly told her. What? My mother in law looked back at my father in law. However, there was no way she could get hold of my father in law. In the first place, I never thought I would live with my son and his wife. That house has just been remodeled, and I will continue to live there. Just as Jenny gave up on Lucas, I don't have the energy to support you anymore. Marry the internet or whatever. And that land is still in my name, so Lucas, you get out. You can do whatever you want with your mother, who you believe in. That house belongs to Jenny and her unborn baby. The baby should grow up with someone who can make good decisions. Huh? Thus, my husband and me and my in laws each got a divorce. Six months later, we got the divorce settlement. My father in law and I each lived in the house we owned, and my husband and mother in law were evicted from their respective homes. My brainwashed husband kept telling me that his mother was right on all fronts. Then why don't you and your mother live together as you wish? I told him. And then he said, Yes, I will. They started living together in an apartment. After that, I heard that my ex-husband visited my father-in-law. Even if I do as mom says, the money will not increase. I want to lend me money. My father-in-law said that he sent him away. My father-in-law has retired and is still working as a contracted employee. He enjoys going to a chess club as his hobby. Now that she is gone, I can save money again. And sometimes he bought toys and was happy to come and visit his grandchild. When the grandson started to laugh and walk, I did someone. My father in law told me shyly, The partner seems to be a member of the chess club. She is a very intelligent person who judges tactics. She seems to have chosen me after analyzing me carefully. That sounds great. My father-in-law and I had big smiles on our faces.